Hey guys, how are you doing today? It's Ansgar here to talk about the Xbox One X, which Microsoft just announced about a week ago at their Microsoft E3 press conference. And I want to figure out who is this for? Is this product for you? You know, maybe you're asking yourself if the Xbox One X is something that you should buy. Well, let's talk about it and hopefully we can figure that out. So I personally believe there are two types of people that the Xbox One X is for. The first of these two people is that Xbox customer who bought the original Xbox One at launch and is a hardcore gamer, plays the shit out of the thing, not just for the exclusives, but also plays all the cross plats and multiplayer games on it, and is now four years later, and they're looking to get the best possible experience going forward. It's about that time, like four years is about the normal cycle for a console generation, like four to six years. Uh, the Xbox 360 and PS3's 10 years, that's that was just bizarre. That doesn't normally happen. So the Xbox One X actually came at a pretty good time for those customers there. And if they do play their games hard, then they're probably looking to get the best they possibly can now, especially since uh, we already have like the PS4 Pro, uh, you know, PCs have gotten cheaper for the cost and just in general, games have higher fidelity now that these base model consoles can't handle at high frame rates anymore. So that customer would probably be very interested in the Xbox One X. The second customer that I believe the Xbox One X is for is for that person that wants high-end fidelity gaming but doesn't want to spend like 1200 bucks on a PC. Now the Xbox One X here in Canada is $600 and in the States it's $500. If you were to get a build a computer basically that can run some just in general even modern games at full HD with high settings 60 frames locked um, you're at least looking at around $500 just for the CPU and the graphics processor alone not to mention if you want to play games like Forza 7 at uh, 4k with 4k textures um, and basically high settings compared to the PC and 60 frames locked, you're not finding that for $600 or $500. Just the CPU and the GPU alone that you need for high-end gaming these days or you know, mid-range gaming is gonna be around that cost anyways, not to mention the motherboard and the case and the power supply and the RAM and all this other stuff, including Windows 10 that you need for a PC. So there's no way that you're getting a $500 PC that can do with the Xbox One X with the console optimization and everything for the same price. No way. So for that customer that's on a budget that doesn't want to spend $1,200 but does want the best that they can get for uh, gaming, the Xbox One X is actually a really good option and it can be a gateway into PC gaming later on. Not only um, you know, if they save up more money in the next couple of years, but more and more games are uh, Windows 10 cross-plat. So if you're buying games on Xbox One that are available in the Windows 10 store as well, that means when you do go to PC eventually, you can log into the Windows 10 store and all those um, Xbox Play Anywhere titles will be there for you, ready to download free of cost. So the Xbox One X is a great place to start for high performance gaming for people that are on a budget and It'll even help them guide them into PC gaming later on as well. So now who is the Xbox One X not for? Well, first of all, if you own a PS4 Pro and, you know, or a high-end PC, I mean, right off the bat, there's no real reason to look at the Xbox One X. The difference between like a PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, it's there. You know, it's six teraflops versus 4.2 teraflops. But the thing is, except for Xbox's exclusives, so like Halo and Forza, uh, Gears of War and all the other stuff they have coming, or lack of a bunch of other stuff that they have coming, those games will probably highly take advantage of the Xbox One's extra power, whether that's for hitting true 4K or just upping the visuals, um, you know, in the next Halo or something. But cross-platform titles will most likely be very, very similar between the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. And even if the Xbox One X has a slightly higher resolution than the PS4 Pro version or something, 
it's not going to be worth it, especially if you don't care about the Xbox One X exclusives or just Xbox exclusives in general. Like even 1080p and 4K, the difference there at a normal sitting distance from your TV isn't mind blowing. Not to mention if the PS4 Pro is already running higher native uh, resolutions like 1800p, etc. Um, the difference between that and 4K is going to be so negligible that it's just not going to be worth getting the Xbox One and kind of giving up the PlayStation 4 exclusives that you might like so much. So it's not for, for those customers. Uh, if you're looking for VR gaming, Microsoft has made no official announcements um, for supporting any hardware. So at this moment, it's not for those customers. You know, you can pick up a PS4 Pro and a PSVR headset for about the same price as an HTC Vive. And in this case, you're getting both the console and the headset. That's everything you need. Um, if you get the HTC Vive, you still need a beast computer to run VR properly. So uh, for VR customers, Xbox One X isn't gonna be it either. And for casual gamers who dip in here and there, or someone that just wants like a 4K HDR Blu-ray player, uh, you can get that in the Xbox One S for less money. You can get dedicated uh, players for less money. You can just get, you know, lower end consoles like the original base models for uh, casual gaming. You don't need to have the One X or, or even the PS4 Pro in that case. So it's not for those customers either. Really, it's for the Xbox enthusiast and for the person that wants high end gaming but doesn't want to spend a ton of money on a PC right now that can uh, basically get the same performance as the One X. So those are who I think the Xbox One X is for. If that sounds like you, you might be interested in picking one up. If not, maybe avoid this one and wait till the next console. Uh, it should be interesting how they handle console generations from now on, uh, if they even still exist. Uh, Microsoft's end seems like they're just gonna do incremental updates every now and then. PlayStation might still have like a proper PlayStation 5 in a couple, couple of years, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Hopefully this helped you kind of make a decision on whether uh, you should go out and pre-order that Xbox One X or not. And we will see you next time. Anyways, guys, have a good one. Thanks for watching.